So, have you ever thought of overclocking your AMD Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5, or Ryzen 3 processors? Well, this video is for you. Some of you might be clueless on how to go about with overclocking. Well, fear not, I got it covered for you, and we'll go into the details right after this introduction. Now, before we begin, a little bit about this machine. It runs at AMD Ryzen 7 1700. It uses an Astrop X370 gaming motherboard. It has a Zotac GTX 1080 mini. It runs two sticks of ADATA Bladefire DDR4 3000. It uses an ADATA SX930 SSD. It has a Super Flower 550 watt power supply. And the casing itself is a fractal design Meshify C. Good stuff? All right. Hope you like this machine. I like it very much. All right, now let's begin with the overclocking session. For overclocking purpose, I always recommend using the BIOS of which when you see a screen like this, just press the delete button on your keyboard. Just keep on pressing it. Repeatedly press the delete button until you get into this screen. And yeah, this is the, the BIOS, the UEFI interface on an Astro motherboard. So as you can see, I'm running a Ryzen 7 processor as mentioned earlier. Yeah, the base clock is 3 GHz. So for this BIOS, overclocking is easy. I just switch to manual or in the overclock mode and see this frequency, manual. And here, just set the speed. It was 3000 MHz. I set it to 3300 megahertz. 10% overclock is done. I have overclocked the machine. Now the machine boots and I am entering Windows. Now I cut all the, those uh, scenes of waiting so now you get to see what it is. We are entering Windows and as you can see from the CPU Z here, it's running at 3.3 GHz. Now what you can do is keep on increasing the speed. So right now, we can enter Windows successfully. Great. So let's restart the machine and we'll go with a 3.4 gigahertz. That's what how you do it. You go with a 3.3, 3.4 until whatever else, the maximum until either Windows refuses to load or even when you manage to enter Windows, you reach your desktop and it's unstable. Now that's when you will back down the speed. For example, let's say if your processor is unstable at 3.6, you then you settle with the last stable frequency. Maybe it's a 3.5 gigahertz. All right, try that one. Enter into desktop and do two things. First, you run a Cinebench test. Now. If the Cinebench test passes, you proceed with an ASUS RealBench test. Do you understand it? Uh, the logic behind this exercise is that when you run Cinebench, Cinebench isn't exactly a heavy load software, but what it does it is it works your CPU. If running a Cinebench test fails, this means your processor can't even handle the bare basic. So that's why I always recommend running a Cinebench test first. So run, running a Cinebench test means you have to pass a whole cycle of this thing and have a score period. Now that's the preliminary test. Now once you pass the Cinebench test, you load the ASUS real bench. Now the download links are provided in the description down below. So uh, in my machine here, I have everything already. So let's go with the, this was Cinebench, sorry, this is what real bench look like. Just now was Cinebench. This one is Asus real bench, which I've run it, I've loaded it. So you come to this screen, you click on stress test and you click on start and it will run for 15 minutes. So as long as you pass this 15 minutes test, your rig is stable. Now, some people may say you should run Prime 95 and OCCT. Well, you can. Those would actually run more, even greater load, greater voltage, but those tests, in my opinion, are unrealistic. 
fine by me if you want to run it and one thing I need to highlight is that you should also monitor the temperature supposedly if you are not using a better cooler you are using just a stock cooler um, it can handle quite some te temperature load but in these uh, Ryzen Master software is a great way for you to monitor your temperature so as you run uh, stress tests for example and let's go with Cinebench because it's easy yeah so as you can see I'm gonna run a Cinebench and what you see here is the temperature it will go higher and higher very nice 46 47 as it moves it's uh, now 47.25 it is not exactly the heaviest of load hence like what I mentioned earlier this is a very basic test it is not that heavy on load the temperature barely moves and if your system fails a Cinebench test means it's really unstable now supposedly I run a real bench now where is it Now, when I run the real bench, you will see that the temperature goes up a lot higher. Okay, where is that? 35 now. Stress tense, start. And what you will see here right now is 35, 46. And now as the stress comes in, now let me move this aside. Now it's 42, 43, 44. And you'll go higher. Now 45, 46. Now bear in mind that I'm running a Ryzen 7 1700. It, the, the power draw on this uh, processor is low. So even going at 3.5 gigahertz, it's not gonna hurt much and furthermore I am running a really nice cooler here which is the this uh, ID cooling frost flow plus 240 so the temperature is very well maintained if you're running a stock cooler you can see you could see a much higher voltage a uh, much higher temperature but that doesn't mean it can handle it now I'm not touching on voltage pumping yet but if you want a little to do to gain even more speed you will be running with a voltage pump I personally wouldn't go too far wouldn't go beyond 1.45 my rig here for example reaches 4 gigahertz with a 1.4 X V core uh, and this it took me some more than a couple of hours to fine-tune it to get it to run where I want so all right that's it for this video you saw the overclocking process is as simple as it is. It is. Um, temperature doesn't gain that much because of the great cooler I have and um, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. It's basically a long process of boosting the speed till it hits the limit once it hits the limit. Do you want to pump voltage to stabilize it and go further or do you want to play the other way around where you don't touch the voltage and reduce the temperature well since this is uh, this video is meant for beginners i am not touching on the voltage part but i hope that you um learn something out of this all right so that's it for this overclocking video i hope you enjoy it if you have any questions leave them down below and of course if you find this video useful share it to your friends family whoever and i really appreciate that and that aside do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't i'll see you in my upcoming videos thank you for watching bye bye